Thank you very much. A warm welcome on behalf of the Energy Agency. I would first of all like to thank the organizers for allowing us to make a presentation here. Uh, the organizer uh, made a very interesting proposal for uh, this presentation. How does uh, the economic recession influence the regulator's operations? First, I would like to focus on three issues. Uh, it was said that regulation is a business, a, a very difficult business. And before we were able to listen to our systemic operator, uh, him thanking us, uh, is there's nothing wrong with that. But if we started a discussion, uh, those you would see that it wouldn't be an easy discussion. What do we want to achieve? A satisfied user on the one hand, low prices and so on. So on the other hand, we wish to have companies who need to be comp competitive and we need uh, time and money for this and that, for smart networks and so on. And But whenever changes need to occur, we come together again because we don't like changes. So this is the crucial business that takes place within the framework of our institution. And the second point is something that is a cause for concern, and that is that we push away investors. Not that we do not attract them, we even push them away. And we must ourselves ask ourselves why. That is a key question. In Slovenia, we are facing these problems today. Yesterday, I took part in a discussion, and I said, a public discussion, and I said, uh, do we want to have a strong national regulator? If we do, then we need a leg legislation that would support us. If not, then let's have tigers with no teeth. So what do we want to have? On the one hand, we want to um, satisfy the consumer, protect the consumer. So let's do some changes, but we don't like changes, as I said. Th this is what I'm telling you, and I want to be as straightforward as possible. Slovenia is therefore facing these issues today for quite a number of time. We are trying to translate the directive into our national legislation, but we are going on and about uh, the regulator's role. If we are backed up with the legislation, then we will be able to fulfill our mission. In the opposite case, we will not be able to do that. The legislation alone will give us sufficient basis for an adequate surveillance, sanctioning and guiding the companies into the right direction. That is our mission. Now, I need to be very quick because you have given me um, only 10 minutes. So, the main question evolves around recession. I think the regulator cannot give the answer. It's not the only body that can give the answer on whether the recession influences the regulation or not, and to what extent. It does influence uh, the regulation, but it's not only the only factor of influence. A regulator needs to take into account the whole of the environment, and we need to create clear and sound rules as well as predictable circumstances for the players in this field to guarantee a certain kind of stability for the investors. And for that we need an adequate policy and an adequate uh, rules of play. The old directive had uh, six articles, for instance, devoted to uh, national regulations, whereas uh, today this is not the case and uh, it is understood that the regulators can no longer breathe and markets cannot be regulated. What I want to say is that apart from the economic recession we also need to t take into account all the parameters mentioned on this slide and these influence price settings and so on. I don't want to repeat myself but the regulators need to regularly monitor 
consumer satisfaction, client satisfaction on the one hand, but on the other hand, we need to work hand in hand with systemic operators. The regulator finds itself somewhere in between, and I don't speak on behalf of electricity here. I, we only we also speak on behalf of gas, on behalf of uh, renewables, and in the future, probably uh, on behalf of cogeneration and biomass and so on. So the regulator needs to be a common point, a junction. It is clear that we cannot regulate one market in one manner and another market in another manner. There has to be a certain kind of continuity here, of course, bearing in mind the specificities of different markets. Of course, that is logical. The new legislation will impose a number of new tasks uh, on us. That is why our agency has already initiated a, a certain number of procedures that will help us to identify our goals, uh, to identify new methodolo methodologies that need, will need to be used once the legislation is adopted, which means we need to take into account the new developments around the smart grids and so on. I would like to call upon you to regularly follow our web page where we publish different parts of our process, the documents related to our processes when it comes to the renewables, to the smart grids and so on. We always publish the relevant documents on our web webpage, so please do follow this, these publications and do take part in the uh, feedback that we gather with regard to these documents. The crisis is a heavy burden for the industry and if we want to encourage the industry and give it a stimulus and a boost, then we will need to find a common solution, a solution about the and, and a recognition of the burden that we are able to take on our shoulders. So the regulator is the body that needs to ensure stable and clear conditions. Uh, this is our task. In doing that, we need to negotiate with systemic operators and whenever a systemic operator is very pleased and satisfied, then there's something wrong with the regulator because the regulator and the systemic operator never walk hand in hand logically because we have different needs and different requirements. We do call upon you, however, to take part actively because Together we will be able to set the framework for the new regulatory period. Thank you.